to educate us. So we really appreciate all, all that you are doing. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the next witness, Senator Boyer. Next uh, thank you. questioner. Sorry, Senator thank, Boyer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you all for presenting here today. My question is for Dr. Kirby. One concern that the committee has heard over the course of this week is that individuals may choose me because they feel as though they have no other option due to lack of access to adequate health care or support services. And we certainly heard that today. To remedy this, it's been recommended that Parliament place a stronger burden of proof on physicians to ensure that they not only inform but also facilitate access to alternative services. In your opinion, what would this amendment entail for a physicians? And would such an amendment be an effective accountability mechanism to ensure that patients have had access to alternative treatments? Thank you for that, that question, the very important one. In my own view, um, I, I think for both uh, conditions that are physical and mental health conditions, the social determinants of health are so important in terms of how people are treated, how they're managed, how they actually experience their illness. And unfortunately, uh, we haven't been able to change our approach to addressing the social determinants of health rather than just kind of actively treating in a Band-Aid fashion illnesses once they become fully problematic and, and presenting. Unfortunately, I don't think we can hold up, uh, you know, made legislation on the basis of there being sort of inadequate attention to uh, the social determinants of health. And of course, that would apply equally, I think, to physical health and mental health uh, services. For instance, there's an inadequate, you know, there's an inadequate integrated palliative care services across most of Canada, particularly the rural areas. And of course, you know, the funding for mental health services has been, is atrocious uh, in terms of, of, of the the burden of uh, mental health illness there is in this country, the funding is is actually, you know, is disgusting really, you know, in the, in the levels of, you know, four to 3% to, to 10% per province or jurisdiction. So um, it's, it's a more systemic kind of issue to do that. I don't think you can ask uh, physicians to, you know, kind of uh, force patients or even encourage patients to undergo or get involved in, various treatments interventions which are are you know that they, they don't want to engage in and so i think with the legislation bill c14 etc it's been very careful not to say well it's you have to have tried everything and that has to have failed before you qualify for me it's that you have to be presented with information you have to be sort of told you know what's available to you what's publicly funded etc what's with you know what's available to you and you choose among that but i do think that Physicians should work with other healthcare providers to facilitate the access of, of patients to a whole variety of other treatments as best they can, recognizing that, you know, if you don't have, you know, clinical services for mental health patients in the community, that you, you have nothing to refer to. And I don't think we should hold back on, on made legislation because of inadequate attention to the social determinants of health. So there Thank wouldn't you. be an amendment then? What's no that? amendment would then no amendment would do it. I don't I, th I think what you, I think if I've interpreted your question correctly, I don't think a particular amendment is going to help. I think that most physicians that are dealing with patients over time that have profound suffering, you know, suffering that's enduring or whatever, have you know really have tried so hard to facilitate their access to everything okay. possible. Senatrice Dufuy. De 